Hi everyone. Uh, in this class, uh, let us see about uh, rocket propulsion, uh, especially how the chemical rockets are classified and uh, how the chemical rockets are working and uh, based on what principle it works and uh, what are the uh, important uh, propellants are used in the uh, uh, chemical rockets. So those things we will see in this class. First we will see about uh, rocket propulsion. So what is meant by rocket propulsion? So rocket propulsion nothing but it is a type of jet propulsion uh, from which uh, thrust is produced by ejecting a stored matter. Uh, so that is called uh, propellant. So in the case of uh, rocket propulsion, uh, what is the working principle? And uh, based on what principle it works? So actually this rocket propulsion works based on the Newton's third law of uh, motion. So uh, Newton's third law says uh, for every action uh, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So that is what uh, uh, happening uh, in the case of a rocket also. Because whenever uh, 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 chemical matters are ex exposed or expelled through the nozzles, uh, then uh, for the for e for equal to that amount uh, there will be a, a forward motion so that forward motion we call it as uh, thrust so uh, that is what um, uh, the Newton second law uh, proves how the rocket engine works so now we will see about the uh, chemical rockets and classifications chemical rockets are classified uh, uh, in two three types. One is a solid propellant rocket motors and uh, liquid propellant rocket motors and then uh, another one more type is called hybrid rockets. So that is nothing but the combination of uh, solid propellant rocket and uh, liquid propellant rocket motors. So in this class we will see about uh, solid propellant rocket motor and uh, liquid propellant rocket motors uh, and their uh, advantages and uh, disadvantages. So first we will see about the uh, solid propellant rocket motor. Solid propellant rocket motor uh, we have uh, uh, important parts like uh, combustion chamber and uh, expansion nozzle, nothing but uh, conversion diversion nozzles. And then we have one more thing called uh, igniter. So in, in the solid propellant rocket motor, uh, the igniters are like uh, detonators which contains uh, uh, highly reactive explosive material like uh, lead oxide which is used for uh, igniting the uh, propellant. So once the uh, propellants are ignited uh, using the igniter then the uh, rapid combustion and uh, heat release uh, takes place. Then uh, this uh, uh, rapid uh, this heat release again conducted back into the propellant so into the propellant so that uh, the process is self-sustaining so in the case of uh, solid propellant rocket motor once the uh, burning starts it cannot be stopped so that is one of the major uh, disadvantages and also it does, uh, duration of the burning also less so duration uh, the very small, the short duration only generally solid propellant rocket motors are used. So uh, generally this uh, propellant uh, burning or a burning rate, rate burning uh, of the propellant that can be controlled that by using the burning rate. So burning rate uh, depends upon the uh, size of the propellant or uh, propellant and uh, shape of the propellant and also the combustion chamber pressure. So size of the propellant uh, uh, and the shape of the propellant uh, depends on the uh, pattern. So uh, depends on the propellant grind. So propellant grind is nothing but it is a combination of both uh, fuel and accelerator. So that is what uh, we, we say propellant. Mm -hmm. So propellant grinds are uh, having the different shapes, uh, shapes and uh, patterns. So if you say tubular shape and uh, star shapes, hollow cylinders and the cruciform. So these are and all uh, some of the important uh, uh, propellant uh, patterns used, uh, used in the propellant grinds. 
ஸோ இந்தியாவை சம்மோர் ப்ரொஃபனல் கிரைண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் சேப்ஸ் நத்திங் பட் ஆங்கர் ஆங்கர்டு ப்ரொஃபனல் கிரைண்ட் சேப் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ டபுள் ஆங்கர்ட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ ராட் அண்ட் டியூப்ஸ் ஸோ திஸ் ஆர் அண்ட் ஆல் சம் ஆஃப் த ப்ரொஃபனல் கிரைண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் பேட்டர்ன்ஸ் ஜென்ரலி வி யூ இந்த ஸ்டார் சேப் அண்ட் ஹாலோ சிலிண்டர் ஆர் ஹாலோ சேப்டு ப்ரொஃபனல் கிரைண்ட்ஸ் கிவ் அ ஸ்டேபிள் கம்பர்ஷன் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் ஹையர் த்ரஸ்ட் ஸோ ஸோ த்ரஸ்ட் ஆல்சோ வில் பி ஸ்டாட்டிக் ஸோ இட் வான் பி வேரிங் ஸோ அண்ட் டூரேஷன் ஆஃப் த பர்னிங் ஸோ எவ்ரி திங் வில் பி குட் இன் த கேஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்டார் ப்ரொஃபலன் ஸ்டார் சேப்டு ப்ரொஃபலன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹாலோ சேப்டு ப்ரொஃபலன்ஸ் ஸோ ஹியர் வி ஹாவ் அனதர் ஒன் தட் இஸ் that is that is how the burning rate uh, by using the this uh, shape of the propellants uh, shape and uh, size of the propellants so burning rates uh, can, can be controlled so that is a uh, depends upon the size it depends on size upon the uh, size and uh, pattern and also the combustion chamber pressure so so here we see that uh, uh, some of the important propellants like solid propellants nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin so uh, which has the uh, specific symbols around uh, 105 to 195 and uh, asphalt and uh, percolate which has the specific symbols of 180 to 195 and uh, kclo4 and uh, c2h2 h4o which has the specific symbols of 165 to 210 so here we have seen one thing called a specific symbols specific symbols is uh, one of the important uh, uh, characteristics of the rockets so which defines the performance of the rockets generally specific symbols are defined uh, 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 it is a ratio of thrust divided by mass flow rate into uh, gravity due to acceleration so this is what about uh, the specific symbols but a specific symbols uh, gives the quick determination of the thrust of the rockets and also how the efficient the efficiency of the rocket also can be defined by using the specific symbols so uh, so in that point uh, uh, aspect uh, the specific symbols is very much useful for uh, determining and analyzing the performance of the uh, rockets so whenever we talk about uh, rockets the specific symbols also will be uh, taken into account so we will say uh, this uh, this much uh, specific symbols this propellant has or uh, any kind of propellant has the specific symbols uh, so that is what we mentioned the uh, nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin has the specific symbols of uh, the range of the specific symbols 105 to 195 so uh, that is what i will say that is in, in terms of seconds the unit of the specific symbols is nothing but uh, seconds so so this is what about uh, solid propellant rocket motors and uh, now we will uh, we'll see about the liquid propellant rocket motors uh, liquid propellant rocket motors uh, in uh, where uh, the fuel and accelerators are uh, stored separately and uh, here uh, in the combustion chamber and uh, uh, nozzles and uh, also the igniter for igniting the fuels uh, fuels and accelerator so everything is there here also and uh, only the thing uh, fuel and accelerators are separate whereas in the case of solid propellant uh, fuel fuel and accelerators are together together binded by using the binder so uh, that is that happens in the case of solid propellant rocket motor but in the case of rocket, liquid propellant rocket motor both the fuel and accelerators are separate and uh, here uh, fuels and accelerators are taken uh, by the separate uh, pipeline uh, and then it is connected with the uh, pumps and then from the pumps it goes to the combustion chamber and then uh, again it goes to the once uh, the combustion products uh, products expanded uh, then that goes uh, through the nozzles 
So that is how thrust is produced by the case of uh, liquid propellant rocket motor and uh, solid propellant rocket motor also has the same principles. So solid propellant rocket motor, uh, this is the combustion chamber where the fuel is stored. So uh, there is no separate uh, place for combustion chamber. So uh, as, much, uh, as much as uh, we store the propellant in the combustion chamber, uh, that much amount of uh, thrust will be produced from the solid propellant rocket motors. And whereas here uh, the combustion chamber uh, can be smaller. In the case of uh, liquid propellant rocket motor, the combustion chamber can be smaller because we no need to store all the fuels and uh, oxidizers in the uh, combustion chamber. So that is uh, that will be that is stored in stored separately. So that is the main advantage. Uh, here in the case of liquid propellant rocket motors. So combustion chamber need not be a uh, yeah, bigger size, it can be a smaller size. And uh, another thing is uh, here uh, we have a uh, we have a, this kind of system, this kind of arrangement, but uh, this won't uh, give you uh, give us the stable combustion or uh, uh, enough uh, thrust uh, that will be produced by the uh, engines. So in order to uh, even uh, the weaker uh, combustion or weak combustion or uh, very low thrust will be produced uh, once the fuel and oxidizers are supplied in this arrangement. So in order to avoid that uh, we, we should have a, another uh, separate system uh, which will enhance the flow of the fuel and oxidizer and that will be supplied to the uh, combustion chamber. So for that uh, we have uh, two types of uh, systems. One is the pressure feed system, another one is called uh, pump, feed, pump feed systems. So pressure feed system is nothing but uh, the pressure store will be stored separately. That means a uh, high uh, pressurized uh, tank that will have a uh, separate, separate. Then the tank that, uh, the, the, uh, that will be stored in, in the form of uh, gases. That gas will be nothing like uh, uh, you know uh, inert gases. So inert gases is the uh, that is what stored in the pressurized uh, tanks. So that inert gas will be supplied to the fuel and oxidizer, and that will uh, push up the fuel and oxidizer um, before reaching the combustion chamber in the correct proportion and also in the uh, enough uh, quantity. So that need to be supplied to the combustion chamber. So another thing is. Uh, uh, another another way is to have the pump uh, pump feed uh, system so that will be connected uh, before the uh, this uh, fuel and oxidizers so here we can say this is the pump this is the pump uh, feed systems and uh, where uh, fuel and oxidizers are coming to the pump means uh, the pumps will suck the uh, liquid from both uh, oxidizer and uh, fuel so that is sucked uh, to the pump and then again uh, further it will pressurize uh, before reaching the combustion chamber. So that is how the pump uh, system works. <laughs> so in, in the two ways by using the pressure feed system and the pump feed system the liquid propellant rocket uh, motors, are, mo motors can be operated. So uh, this is what about uh, uh, the liquid uh, propellant rocket motors. And also it has some advantages, advantages are that duration of the operation can be uh, improved, that means increased. Uh, here if you want uh, if you want to have a more longer duration of operation that can be achieved uh, with the help of liquid propellant rocket motors. So that is not possible in the case of solid propellant rocket motors because solid propellant rocket motors can be used only for the shorter durations. And uh, here the Cooling of the metal wall uh, can be achieved. Um, uh, so that is uh, the, that will give a good strength because once we cool the uh, combustion chamber metal walls, and uh, so that will uh, uh, give the good strength to keep the good strength. So, but in, whereas in the case of solid propellant rocket motor, the cooling is very difficult because uh, the shorter durations and also the burning uh, once the burning starts it cannot be stopped so because of those reasons uh, cooling uh, uh, using uh, using coolings 
for uh, for the metal walls is very difficult. But whereas in the case of solid propellant rocket motors, uh, cooling we can use the cooling for uh, combustion chamber. So that is how we we can just uh, uh, maintain the strength of the uh, metal that uh, strength of the metal walls. So that can be maintained. So and uh, application. Uh, uh, so here. In the liquid propellant rocket motors, we have uh, different types of propellants. So, one one of the propellant nothing but monopropellants, in which uh, both fuel and uh, auxiliaries, only fuel uh, can be used. So, whereas where uh, the auxiliaries is, is in a, oxygen is input. So, in the monopropellants, uh, oxygen is input. So, we need, no need to sup, uh, supply separate. Uh, auxiliaries in the case of monopropellants. So, for example, uh, nitro methanes and trinitro toluenes, nitro glycerines, hydrogens. These are under some of the important monopropellants. And uh, another uh, type of propellant is called a bipropellant, where uh, fuel and uh, auxiliaries are separate. Like uh, in separately will be stored, uh, like uh, fuel and uh, auxiliaries. So, uh, separately stored and uh, so that can uh, send it to the combustion chamber. So, so uh, some of the important uh, white propellants are hydrogen peroxide and alcohol, or uh, even sometimes instead of alcohol, some gasoline also can be added in this. And the liquid hydrogen and the liquid uh, hydrogen oxygen. So this is another uh, white propellant. So, uh, this hydrogen peroxide and uh, alcohol or gasoline has the specific symbols around 240, and whereas uh, liquid hydrogen or uh, liquid oxygen has the specific symbols around uh, 364. So, and also we have one more thing called a hyperbolic. Hyperbolic uh, propellants are nothing but uh, when uh, both uh, fuel and oxidizer comes in contact, then uh, automatic combustion takes place. So, it does not require any kind of uh, igniter. So, the hyperbolic propellant does not require any kind of igni ignition process. So, that is, a, that is what we call as hyperbolic uh, propellant. But uh, hyperbolic propellants are uh, highly toxic and it has uh, some kind of uh, handling uh, uh, difficulties. So, uh, even though all the propellants, uh, generally all the propellants uh, have the some of the handling uh, difficulties, and um, uh, all the propellants are uh, highly hazardous, as, and also it is all the propellants are toxic. So handling uh, procedures for uh, uh, for the solid propellant as well as uh, liquid propellants are uh, highly important. Now we will see about uh, the thrust, how the thrust is produced. Thrust is produced uh, by, uh, uh, by uh, expelling the matter uh, through the uh, nozzle. So that is how the which is equal and opposite to the thrust. So now uh, we will see the thrust equation. Thrust equation nothing but m star into V e plus Pe minus Pa into Ae. So, M, M dot is nothing but uh, that is a uh, mass flow rate of the propellant and uh, Ve is nothing but uh, exhaust velocity or exit velocity and uh, P is the exit pressure and uh, Pa is the ambient uh, pressure. So, A is the exit velocity area of the nozzle. So, in order to achieve maximum thrust, uh, either we should have a, a, a more uh, mass flow rate, nothing but uh, more uh, amount of uh, propellant grains or propellant to be stored in the combustion chamber. So we can say the hole is the combustion chamber. In this, if the um, propellant, uh, if you have a more amount of propellant, uh, completely filled uh, in the propellant combustion chamber, then uh, we will have a uh, more thrust. So, that is direct, directly proportional. If you have the more uh, mass flow rate, then you will have the more thrust. And uh, in another way, if you increase the length of the nozzle, 
in such a way that uh, it is expand the expansion in the nozzle is uh, is uh, is equal to the uh, expansion in the nozzle that is the pressure pressure of the expanding nozzle will be should be will be equal to the expansion uh, the pressure of the ambient condition then if this condition uh, become equal if this condition is achieved that means uh, pe equal to pa if uh, pe equal to pa means uh, expansion pressure uh, is equal to the ambient pressure then uh, this term will become zero even though this term becoming zero but the exit velocity will be increased since the exit velocity increases the thrust also increases so this is the condition for option, optimum uh, thrust for achieving the optimum thrust uh, the, the P, this is the condition so this this uh, uh, condition uh, suits for both uh, uh, solid propellant rocket as well as uh, liquid propellant rocket now we'll see about the uh, some of the advantages and the disadvantages of the solid propellant rocket motor and uh, the liquid propellant rocket motors in solid propellant rocket motor uh, once the burning starts it cannot be stopped so only the burning rate can be controlled so so stopping the combustion is uh, highly impossible in the case of uh, solid propellant rocket motors so that is one of the major disadvantages uh, in the case of uh, solid propellant rocket motor and uh, solid propellant rocket motors used in the uh, assisted takeoffs and especially assisted takeoffs uh, that uh, missiles uh, projectiles for launching the missiles and the projectiles uh, solid propellant rocket motors uh, can be used and uh, also solid propellant rocket motors are used in the uh, booster stage in the booster stage uh, the, the solid propellant rocket motors are very much useful so and especially for the small sized rockets uh, solid propellants are uh, uh, much useful as well as it is uh, highly sufficient uh, and in the case of liquid propellant rocket motors uh and uh, controlling the thrust and uh, adjusting the uh, uh, that uh, nozzle uh, flow conditions so those are all uh, easy uh, in the case of uh, liquid propellant rocket motors because uh, we, since we supply uh, fuel and oxygen uh, separately uh, so um, so it be it is easy for us for us to stop the flow uh, either by control valve or some other uh, valves by using some other uh, for control mechanism so the flow can be adjusted or it can be stopped so that is one of the major advantage in the case of uh, liquid propellant uh, liquid propellant rocket motors and uh, Uh, liquid propellant rocket motors uh, especially uh, uh, means uh, we cannot store it for longer uh, durations uh, storing the liquid propellant uh, propellant propellants are highly uh, difficult and uh, very challengeable uh, because of the toxic and uh, uh, hazardous uh, characteristics of the propellants so especially this uh, liquid propellants uh, should be stored at uh, very low temperatures so uh, that is uh, one of the biggest challenge uh, in storing in the uh, uh, storing the propellants so in another side uh, solid propellant rocket motors the storing is easy uh, storing for the longer duration Uh, is uh, very easy to uh, store as well as uh, maintain so so this is uh, what about the uh, solid propellant and uh, liquid propellant rocket motors uh, besides uh, this uh, this characteristics or uh, this advantages and uh, disadvantages uh, generally we expect uh, some of the 
important characteristics. Generally, the calorific values would be higher, uh, uh, and also storing and uh, uh, handling uh, uh, properties should be uh, good uh, in the case of liquid propellant. And then, uh, uh, so these are the, some of the important characteristics. Uh, we should have uh, uh, when we choose the propellant. When we choose the propellant, and uh, it should not be highly toxic, and it should not be hazardous, uh, and uh, it should have the high, higher specific impulse. So these are the some of the characteristics uh, when we talk about uh, uh, when we choose about the propellants. So. And we have one more uh, propellant uh, that is called uh, cryogenic propellant. Cryogenic uh, is nothing but it is a branch of physics which deals with uh, which deals with the very low temperatures. So that is what uh, mean by uh, cryogenic. So cryogenic uh, propellants are uh, uh, very much uh, means uh, has a higher specific impulse, higher specific impulse and also longer durations. It can be used for the longer uh, duration operations. So cryogenic uh, propellants will be in the propellants will be stored at uh, very low temperatures uh, like uh, minus, minus 30 degree or 40 degree or minus 50 degree. So in the very low temperatures, the fuels, as say liquid oxygen or liquid uh, hydrogens or uh, oxygen or fuels, both will be stored at the very low temperatures. So that is what about uh, cryogenic uh, propulsions. So cryogenic, propul cryogenic is the separate area of discussion. So that uh, just have the idea, uh, I'm just giving you this uh, description. So.